Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater Sound, and today I am one lucky synthesis because I get to play with a Moog Model 10 analog synthesizer. This was the first portable compact modular synthesizer ever made by Dr. Robert Moog. This came out in 1971. Now this is a meticulous recreation all the way down to the panels, the hand stuffing of components, the hand wiring, it has 11 modules from that famous synth. And for a limited time, you could own one of these things. And again, I say limited because they've only made so many of these and then that's that. Um, they've been going through the entire line of their modular synthesis and I think they're ending with this one. So this is your last chance to get one of these beauties. And on top of it just being an early Moog, the important thing is, is it has the famous 900 series oscillators, the 901, the 901B, and the 901A controller. And one of the things that made these 901 oscillators famous was their fatness, their girth, their organic hugeness. I mean, you run out of adjectives to describe this stuff, but when you hear a 901, you know it. Um, you, you know it from that very first note that I played and opened up a filter. So along with all the greatness of this oscillator, the one downside is that it's not as stable as the more modern oscillators. When they modernized it, you lost some of that big fatness that just makes this amazing. Um, the oscillators in here were the ones used for Switched on Bach by Wendy Carlos. And if you've read any notes about how she made that album, you know that she spent a lot of time carefully tuning those oscillators before every take. You'll probably do the same thing, but you get that along with the sound, you know, and I will demonstrate some of that sound. Uh, and the key thing is, is that you've got all the parts you need for that famous Moog sound. Um, you've got one of my favorites, the fixed filter bank, and this is the horizontal version of it, which I like mostly because that's just what I started with. Um, you got the 904A low pass filter, you have two envelope generators, you got a voltage controlled amplifier, and then down here, this is the first instance of the CP11 mixer that has that girth again, gain and fatness when you overdrive the inputs, and I'm doing that there. Uh, you've also got a reversible attenuator, which will not only attenuate a signal, but it'll flip it upside down. Um, you've got controller outputs, so I'm using this optional keyboard going into the back, and so that's creating uh, two separate control voltages and two separate triggers, because this is a dual phonic keyboard. I've got one of the uh, triggers going to one envelope and one going to the other. One of them is triggering the uh, voltage control low pass filter, the other one is doing the amplifier, and, um, and all of that was run into a source audio nemesis delay. Uh, this one does not have the spring as like some of the later models, so I have that in there. Um, you'll always know when that's on because of the green light. If the green light's not on, then it is not on. So we'll start with the 901B oscillators. There's two of them. Both are controlled by the 901A oscillator controller. And I'll start with the one on the left here. Uh, they're both identical. Uh, and they each have sawtooth out, sign out, pulse out, and triangular out. All of those are available simultaneously. And the pulse, you can change the pulse with, with, the, with a pulse waveform knob. So we'll start with sawtooth. I'm gonna go into the CP11 mixer, which as you turn it up, you really start feeling the overdrive and what that does. So we'll start here. And notice as I go past 12 o'clock how it changes. And as I mentioned, that goes all the way down to low, so I can take this down to clicks. <laughs> okay, and I can go even lower than that. And now we'll go up to 32 foot. So that was sawtooth, here's sign. Here's pulse. And adjusting the pulse width. And 
becoming triangular. And to the left of that is the 901A oscillator controller. And the way that works is you send voltages to this as opposed to the individual oscillators. And you set that up to track the way you want and the octave that you want. And then you can do the offsets between the two oscillators here. But then as you adjust this, these will both move similarly. So the offset that you have here stays. And so you can have a beat frequency or whatever it is you want and keep it going. And then you have all eight of these out. And you can send that to these four inputs of the mixers or use them as controls to move other things. So the 901 voltage control oscillator is basically the same as the 901Bs, except you get both fixed level outputs of each of the wave shapes like this, but you also get variable outputs where you can use these knobs to send uh, different amounts of each of the different waves. That makes this really good if you're using it as a low frequency oscillator, or if you're doing FM, or you're trying to blend different wave amounts, this is a really great way to do it. That way you could take one of these each out and then take that out to multiples and you can blend different wave types. But other than that, it's basically the same. You get your three control inputs similar to here. And then we'll move over to the voltage control amplifier. Um, this is just basically a volume control that can respond in either linear or exponential. You can set a baseline so you can either turn it all the way down and it'll go to silence or you can turn it to whatever you want to be the bottom amount of volume. And you can get phase inverted inputs and phase inverted outputs. There's a plus and a minus for each. Uh, you get three control inputs to change the volume. And typically what you put there is one of these envelope generators. So these are the 911 envelope generators that were set up in the order, um, in the old way, in which you had time one, time two, time three, which is basically attack, decay, and release. And then at the bottom, you have what they're calling E, and that's your sus level. So instead of an ADSR, it's really an ADRS, if you had to think of it that way. And they each get triggered uh, with an S trig, which is a switch trig. And so basically, when these two things short, um, it fires off the envelope. And you get two of those, and then you take the quarter inch out of that to whatever needs a voltage input. You can also go from that into the multiple and split it so you can send an envelope to more than one place if you want. So now moving up to the top row, we're going to do the 903A random signal generator. It basically makes white noise and pink noise. White noise is all frequencies at equal intensity, and pink noise is all octaves at equal intensity. So first white. And then pink. So the next module is the 907 fixed filter bank. It is one of my favorite Moog modules uh, because you don't get to play with it very often. And basically what it does is it doesn't let anything through except whatever frequency bands you turn up on this thing. And so it lets you radically change the sound of the oscillators because you don't have to have all your harmonics showing. You can cut different ones out. And it's not like a low pass filter where you throw in a big blanket over everything. You can kind of notch things out in an interesting way. And the easiest way to show you that is with white noise. So I'm going to plug it here. And then I'm going to take the white noise into this and then just slowly turning up each of the bands. So here's high pass. Twenty eight hundred kilohertz, two kilohertz, fourteen hundred hertz, thousand hertz, seven hundred hertz, five hundred hertz, three hundred fifty hertz, two hundred fifty hertz, and then everything below that. And now as you blend different ones, especially ones spaced far apart, you get these wonderful outer space ambient kind of other planet sounds.
if you want it a lot bassier, use pink noise as the source. Now we'll do the same thing, but with one of the oscillators. Okay, now I'm going to take that same oscillator and I'm going to put it into the Moog 904A. It's the voltage controlled low pass filter. It's the famous Moog ladder filter. To me, it is probably the most important part of a Moog is its filter. And like all Moog filters, I love this filter. So we're going to come out of that. We'll start with a low note. I'm going to have the regeneration or resonance or feedback set all the way to zero, and then I'll slowly sweep this. With a little more resonance. Some more. And at that point, it's fully regenerating and it's feeding back and it's self-oscillating. Now it's time to take that low-pass filter with some regeneration and sweep it through a low note into the Nemesis delay. It's set to ping pong. I like doing this because it really just shows off the character of the filter. So again, I got a low note, I got regeneration, and now I'm just going to sweep the frequency. Okay, now that I have the 901B oscillator into the voltage controlled filter, I can take an envelope, one of the 911s, and trigger the cutoff of the filter. Now, like I said before, this is attack, decay, release, sustain level. So they put the level at the end. It's like that on the grandmother and matriarch as well. So now, as I trigger a keyboard, I should get because this keyboard trigger S switch goes up to here and that should fire it off. If I turn up the resonance, you'll hear it a little better. But of course, I'm not getting any note changes because I have nothing controlling the pitch of the oscillator. So I'm going to go in here, come out of the control voltage, which is coming from one of the two notes of the keyboard, and I should be able to play notes. Mm -hmm. 
And I can change the release time. Or I can play with the attack time. And all of these go from uh, 2 milliseconds to 10 seconds. And now with some delay. And I can do that for volume as well. So if I, instead of going through the filter, I go into the amplifier. And then send the envelope to the amplifier instead. I'll get the same behavior except now with volume. And Again, I can control release time all the way to 10 seconds. Decay time, very snappy, two milliseconds. And then down at the bottom, I've got, like I said, the CP11 mixer it's got four inputs it has two positive outputs it has two negative outputs so you can have phase inversion uh, depending on which jack you come out of um, and and then just a mult it's basically a one in three out if you want a single signal to go to three places uh, you can't use it to blend signals because uh, it's not designed to do that it's only designed to split but uh, so some things that i can do now uh, with all of it together so one thing I might want to do is have this third voltage control oscillator be an LFO. So I can take this sound that I've already got and I can now modulate the frequency of that with another one of the oscillators. So I'm going to start with a triangle wave out of the 901. I'm going to go into the control input of that oscillator. And as I turn up this triangle knob, I'll get modulation or, or, or um, vibrato. And I can use different shapes. So here's sawtooth and pulse. And then sign. And I can also simultaneously use the other shapes to modulate the filter if I want, modulate the volume, um, and modulate the pitch. So all three of them can be modulated from whichever oscillator you decide is your low frequency oscillator. And then as I mentioned, there's the reversible attenuator. Um, basically, it's a volume control or a level control for either audio or control voltages. So in this case, I'm going to come out of, uh, let's say, the triangle. And then I'm going to go into the oscillator controller. And so now as I turn this up, I should again get different levels of vibrato. And it shouldn't matter whether I go left or right because the wave is symmetrical. But when I go to like a sawtooth, now I'm going to alternate between a ramp and a saw. So you can hear that I can flip it upside down uh, and control the levels at the same time. So that's a handy little thing. 
on the controller outputs, I have three control voltages for my top note, three control voltages for my bottom note. I have two triggers for each, so I have a total of four triggers. And then the very last thing over here are trunk lines. Um, basically, it's just a pair of jacks that are connected to a pair of jacks on the back. So if you have audio that you just want to get to the studio and you don't want cables dragging around, or if you want to bring in an external controller from somewhere else and have it plugged in the back, then you can get to it from up here. Uh, it's just a pass-through and it works great. On the back, we have uh, the large connector, the military connector for the uh, controller keyboard. And there's also a DC output, which was originally there to feed voltage to any of your accessories, drum controllers, ribbon controllers, things like that. And then all the way down in the very bottom is your power switch. And that is it. And the whole thing comes in this Tolex cabinet and the lid goes right on the front. It locks up. You have this entire source of sonic power in a single handle that you can carry places. Uh, a standard IEC will go in the back. You can do 110. You can also do 220 volts. And then standing over here to my left is the Moog Modular Synthesizer Owner's Manual. Uh, this came out in 1981. It's a really cool description of all the modules that were available. Uh, it's in typing type, so you know it's what things looked like before there were actually word processors. Uh, great, great book and a really great addition to this piece of history. Um, so now let's try some really complex modulation and we'll just randomly modulate things with other things and see what kind of craziness we can come up with. And why that's important, that's kind of the main reason you want something like this. Uh, yeah, it's big, yeah, it's fat, um, but what you're really using it for is its ability to take anything and modulate anything else at audible frequencies and being completely analog. There's, of course, no aliasing, and everything just does an amazing thing when you hit it hard with modulation. So let's try it. Okay, so now to show some complex modulation, I'm going to take a sawtooth out into the mixer, and I'll use the 901 to do FM or frequency modulation against that. So I'll start with a sine wave. So here's your sawtooth. And now I'll modulate it with some sine. try it with a more complex wave. I'll use sawtooth. And then some pulse. Same thing into some delay because that's how you got to hear it.
and now the same thing, but now I'm going to patch the resonant filter into that. Now we'll patch in one more oscillator. And then finally, we'll control that with the keyboard. Those of you who want to hear it without the delay, same thing, delay off now. So that's just a quick look at the Moog Model 10 modular analog synthesizer available for a limited time only. If you have any further questions about this synth or other Moogs, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching.